Anyway, it was a great night. Um, I will tell you, uh, we've got our, our chosen series Tuesday night, we'll have it, and uh, on Thursday I'm going to have to cancel our Thursday, so just so you know, um, but, but for uh, Tuesday night we have it, Monday night we have it, I'll send that out to everyone. Tuesday night, if you would like to receive it for Tuesday night, please let me know. Um, also, we need a little help for trunk or treat this year. Lorraine's always has been doing it, and she doesn't know yet if she's going to be here. Sheila's working on it, so if anybody would like to help out with trunk or treat just to get things set up and going, that would be wonderful if we can be outside. So be thinking of ways to decorate your car. That day will be on uh, Saturday, October 26th, and the next day is Reformation Sunday. And, oh, Alex over there, she's going to get confirmed. So oh, yeah. very, I'm very proud of her. i got to tell you, she is one sharp gal, and um, it's been fun. We meet at Starbucks. How many confirmation groups meet at Starbucks? Come on. Yeah. Give it to me here. There we go. And I, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Jamie Volante is thinking, oh gosh, we had to meet here. I'd rather go to Gas Box. <laughs> yep. Missions this month is for Aurora Interfaith. You can bring in food items or you can put money in and just market missions. It will go to Aurora Interfaith. They are always in need of food. And when we show up many times, their, their shelves are empty. So know how important that is. We also have new members that we will receive uh, right after the sermon. So um, I will tell you who they are at the time. We have free items on a table in the uh, fellowship hall. So when you're having your snacks after church, go take what you would like. And then we'll get rid of them. Any other announcements? Oh, good. Welcome to any visitors we have. We give you a chance to introduce yourselves to us if you would like. And is there anyone here who would like to introduce themselves? Okay. Please fill out the record of fellowship. That's great. And uh, with that, let's just take a deep breath and we'll begin our service. Please stand. Into your hands we commit our lives. Into your hands we commit to our church. Worship this morning begins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the our hearts, the secret of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment for silence and for self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son.
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn.
be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
today's reading tells of the suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, who announced the God's word to Judah, but was met with intense opposition and persecution. Jeremiah continues to trust in God in the midst of his suffering. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me. That they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut, off, cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Here is the first reading. Please read Psalm 54 for the Psalm. Save me, O God, by your name and your might. Defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me, and your faithful faithfulness destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice, and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. Second reading from the book of James, third chapter, various verses. The wisdom of God gives, unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality toward others. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show why your good life and your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false with truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is but earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is pure, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Here is the reason. Gospel of St. Mark, 
the ninth chapter, beginning with the 30th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hand, into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Come on up, kids. called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Here, come and look at this mirror. Okay, I want you to look. 
okay. Who do you see now? Everybody. You see everybody? Everybody else. Come and look. Who do you see now? Do you see everybody? <laughs> now, come look. Who do you see now? Everybody. Yeah, you see everybody. Yeah. Who do you all see? Everybody. You. 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 The cross. <laughs> the cross. <laughs> you all, they see the cross. Guess what? When you see everybody, those are all people that you can help in some way or another. You can make their day better. How are ways that you can make their day better? What, how can you make their day better? What would be one way? You can what? You don't know? Can I give you some help? You could do that. That would make their day better, wouldn't it? What's another way to make their day better? You could say hello to them. You could just say hello to them, right? Hello. My name's Mel. Melody. My name's Melody. Right? Or what's another way that you what's another thing you could do? That would make it would that make your day better? Yeah. Yes. If somebody gave you, if one of them gave you a hug, or if they gave you a high five. Or if they just said, hi, how are you today? Would that make your day better? Yes. Yes. You should be thinking, oh, man, this, this little child is asking me about how my day is. Right? That would make their day better. Do you know how much they love children? A whole lot. They <laughs> do love children so much. So anything you want to say to them to be kind would be a wonderful thing to do. And guess what? When you're kind, well, let me see here. When you're kind to somebody, then Jesus. Look, I'm sorry. So that's everybody. We see everybody. Let's keep going. Sorry, I, I, I was just in my in my own little world. <laughs> so whenever we are kind to others, we are doing what Jesus wants us to do. And guess what? Jesus shines through us. So they, you see them, and you're kind to them, but they're seeing Jesus being kind to them because you're doing the work of Jesus. Does that make sense? I want you to try it out. Can you go find somebody out there that you don't know and go say, say hi, how are you today? Just say hi, how are you today? Can you do that? Go, ready, set, go, 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 quick, 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 quick. We got guys just, just say hi, how are you today? Go find someone you don't know, go say hi. <laughs> say hi, how are you today? <laughs> they all went to the same person. <laughs> <laughs>
us what it means to be your disciples, servants of those around us. Help us to understand that it's not about being the best, but about serving. Take away our desires to move forward and push others out of the way. And rest our lives in you so that others may know that you are humble and gentle and kind, accepting and loving. Send your Holy Spirit always to us. Move in and through this room into the hearts of those who need you, which is all of us. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, grace you in peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ who was, who is, and will always be. Absolutely. See, we're not, we're not first, are we? Because Jesus is the one that takes first place. And those around us also take place. There were some thoughts that were going through my mind as Kathy was talking to the kids. And I thought, I'm going to incorporate that into my sermon. And then I couldn't remember as soon as you stopped. What is it about age? Have you ever noticed? I mean, I know you were talking about wrinkles. And I was thinking, oh my goodness. I look in the mirror, kids, I look in the mirror and I think, oh my goodness sake, I have a lot of wrinkles that have developed over the years. But I do have some nice ones here, which are the smile wrinkles. Why, what did that have to do with anything? Absolutely nothing. How many of you remember the 1972 Olympics in Munich, Germany? Anybody else? Uh, who was it? Spitz? Mark Spitz? He won five gold medals. That was a huge thing back then, right? You remember him? Yeah? Did he swim? He yes. swam, yes. And I got to see the pool that he swam in. I know it was an awesome thing. We all sat there and said, oh, Mark Spitz was in this pool. <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. But we also remember Kathy Ritchie. Yeah. She was a gymnast. And she kind of was the one we had our hopes in. Everybody thought she was going to take the gold medal. She was in the lead, and she failed. Put it down. And in a devotional book, she told the story. She had one goal in mind, and that was to be excellent. And when she didn't make what she thought she would make, even though she prayed for strength to move to her return, return routine, she failed. We've all seen people fail in the Olympics, right? In fact, one of our men this year, really, we had our hopes in him, and it was as though he couldn't do anything right in one of the routines. Well, she went back to, a, uh, to her folks, and she was crying, and she said, I'm sorry, I did my best. And she recalls ten words from her mother that she said she would never forget. Doing your best is more important than being the best. In other words, doing what we're called to do is more important than finding a place on a pedestal where the world would look at you for how long. Do you remember? Well, we know some of the people that won gold medals, but if you go back even 10 or 8 years, do you remember who took the gold? In, in something? How about, let's see, we've got to go four years each time. 16 years ago, do you remember who took the gold? Anybody? Sixteen years ago. Huh? 16 years ago. 16 years ago. Well, I, I don't know. Oh, man. Joy, come on. It's, it's 2024. Don't put me on the spot. I'm not good at math. I took a foreign language to get out of math. Perfect. I'm not the best in math. I will guarantee you that. But it's interesting how we want to be in a place. And we think if we make it to that place, we will know it and everybody else will know it. But it's really not about famous. It's about being the best we can be, but not for ourselves. It's being the best we can be for Christ. I will never live up to my standards. 
I will never live up to the standards of the church or the standards of my parents or the standards of my husband. I will fail every single time, and so will you. We have those moments where we think we're getting ahead. We think everything's great, everything's dandy. Everybody looks at us and knows who we are. Do you even know who was in the presidential race in 1920? What does that tell us? We were to lie. What? We were to lie. We were to lie. Okay. Oh. I'm thinking right now, I must not be a very good pastor. Oh, well. <laughs> there was a, a, years ago, there was a um, documentary, I love documentaries, and it was about the Navy SEALs. I don't remember the name of it. And they were, they were in training. You all know the Navy SEALs are like top notch, right? They were in training, and so... Uh, there were four teams they had to be in these rafts and get through the high seas. And there was the first group that came through and, and uh, the leader said, you're first place. And the second group came through and he said, who are you? And they said, first loser, sir. <laughs> oh boy, I thought I'd at least get a laugh. <laughs> first loser, sir. In other words, I'm not first place. I'm a silver medalist. I'm a bronze medalist. I'm not as good as them. I'm not the best. And on the road, they're all wondering who's the best. All the disciples bickered over and over through the years of following Jesus because they wanted to be the best. James and John, in fact, in Matthew's Gospel, we have the story, the account, of their mom going to Jesus and saying to him, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, let one of my sons be on your right hand and one of my sons be on your left hand. In other words, I want my kids in first place because if my kids are in first place, guess what it says about me? I'm great. I have a place. My kids are important. They're the best. How did Jesus deal with that? He calls them over and he calls a child and he says, whoever welcomes one of thee welcomes the one who sent me. But even before that, he said, what Kathy was talking about, whoever wants to be first must become last and servant of all. There are two words in Greek that have to do with ser servant. One, diaphanos, which we say deacon, or deaconess. And another one is doulos. And diaphanos is the one that is used here. And in that particular word, it really means that, that you're a minister, you're serving a meal, you're a waiter, or you're a deacon. You're under someone else. Some people look at waiters and waitresses as though they're nothing. Have you ever watched people treat a waiter or waitress terrible? Have you ever caught yourself treating a waiter or a waitress terrible? I haven't either because I was a waitress. <laughs> and there were people who were very kind to me and there were people who were not kind at all. There were people who made me feel like dirt as I served them. But I'll tell you, there was one person in particular. I was walking, and I had a picture oh, up here, a picture up here for another table, and four glasses. And I was walking along in Pizza Hut, where I was a waitress, and someone, without thinking, pushed his chair back, hit me, and everything went up in the air and fell on them. How do you think the man reacted? What? He was the kindest, most gentle person of all. And he said to me, I know it wasn't your fault. Here, let me help you. I will always remember him. I have no idea what his name was, but he taught me something that day. 
I was shattered. Mommy has your thoughts. He was hit by a pitcher. He had beer all over his back. He could have reacted in a horrible way, but he didn't. And to this day, I remember that event. Now, I could remember that I was treated terrible and that my, my fears came to reality. I didn't have to be. Because he was a servant to me at that moment in time and took away all the fears within me. We have the ability as the servants of Christ to take away the fears and struggles inside somebody else because we were served first. Jesus promised to forgive us. He promised to love us even when we fail him. He promised to serve us. In fact, he did to his death. And he says to us, I want you to emulate me so that others might know how important they are to me. It's not about us being the best. It's about us loving others. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4, each one should use whatever gifts he or she has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one speaking the very word of God. God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Be kind. Isn't that what Kathy was telling the kids? And how far does kindness go? You have no idea what another person's going through. You have no idea if they just lost their loved one. You have no idea if they just felt deserted inside or demeaned by another. And your kind word can make all the difference. You remember when um, the song, let's see, I think it was Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra that sang, I did it my way? That's not the way we're to be. Do you know how many funerals I've done and that's the song? <laughs> I did it. Not in church, but I did it my way. And there's five people in the pews. Yeah, you did it your way. God calls us, to, calls us to do it his way. There's a church, an Episcopal church, and on the outside, as people are coming in, it says servants' interest. Entrance. We should do that out there. Servants' entrance. And as we leave, it should say servants to the world. Wouldn't you think every day walking out of the church what your role is? It's crazy, isn't it? In uh, Matthew's Gospel, the 25th chapter, it says, um, Well done, good and faithful servant. I was hoping Bill would be here. That's his favorite line. He says, When I die, I want you to preach on that. Well done, good and faithful servant. And it doesn't say, Well done, good and famous servant, does it? It says, Well done, good and faithful servant. Years ago, Robert Fulton wrote, all I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Anybody read that book? It's a great book. It's true. It's true. That's <laughs> right, kindergarten teacher. Uh, when, when Mike and I, I know I'm going on a little bit today, when Mike and I would go back uh, to kindergarten, we'd always go to school with the kids and sit there. And, and when, when Abby was in kindergarten, they would have to go in for, uh, into the uh, auditorium. Somebody was going to be doing something in there. And Miss Dinkle said, okay, what are we supposed to do, kids? And one kid said, uh, be nice. Another kid said, don't talk. And another one said, don't trip anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But these are some things that uh, he said in his book. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. And when you go out into the world, watch for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. What would happen if we, as the people of God, just did that? We 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the church. Okay. God has come to us in so many ways. We are drawn together by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation in all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries of hospitality and faith formation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity, encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations, heal divisions in our country and local communities that together we might cooperate for your cooperate for your the good of all. Hear us, O God. Faithful God, you draw near to all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to those who suffer, for those in the midst of war, for John and Casey, Dolores and her son Dan, for Marvin, Bonnie, Relenta, Robert, and Patty, Mike, Susan, uh, Ashlyn, Alicia, for Lisa, Gary, Scott, Annie, Trudy, Donna, for Linda and Andrew, for Joe, Aurelia, Rodney, for Ray, Danny, Carol, and Linda. Dan, Caitlin, Virginia, Sydney, Brianna, for Susan and Kathy, Glennis and Pat, for Sydney and Randy, Vasilisa and Ron, for Joyce, Brooke, and Bill. And we pray for Will, Jim, and Josh as they're homebound. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and general generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. We thank you for Tom and Tanya, Lenahan and Connor, for Sean, Brittany, Arlo, Presley, Colson, and Tyler, and for John and Patsy. Thank you for all the ways they serve. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God. In the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, Amen. Uh, a couple of things. No. Patty Garcia's mom, Aurelia, um, was, was diagnosed with very extensive cancer this week. Mm. And um, so we want to keep them in our prayers. Also, um, Linda Washington, I talked to her yesterday, and she has COVID, and she is very, very sick and hospitalized. So let's keep them in our prayers. At this time, we receive the offering.
precious God, we thank you for all that you've given us. And we return to you a portion of our time, our talents, and our treasures for the upbuilding of your church, that others may know of your grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We learn the thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is ready. Guest children are always welcome to come forward. All that's necessary is a believing heart, a belief in the words given and shed for you, a belief in the presence of Christ, our Savior, at this most holy meal. This table does not belong to us. It belongs to the servant of all, and he calls us to partake with him. This does not belong to Bethel Lutheran Church, the ELCA, Pastor Barb, but this is Jesus' table, and you and all of you are welcome here. You may be seated. The ushers will show you forward. Please know, please. There is wine in the trays on the outside, and in the center there's grape juice. Feel comfortable. Please come forward when the ushers give you opportunity.
cross. given, 
you are held and you are fed and you are clean for one moment in time and then you'll sin the minute I stop talking. <laughs> now may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you, keeping you in his grace, his truth, his love now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, as you pour your love out upon us, allow us the honor of pouring your love on others. Thank you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. Thank you.